Hello everybody, today I'm going to be taking a look at Wargames Atlantic's latest offering for death fields, and that is Le Grognard's Heavy Weapons. Okay, so let's take a look then at the Le Grognard Command and Heavy Support Box. So this allows you to make six multi-part uh, heavy weapons with their crew, and also gives you additional command pieces for either these or the Grognard standard box. So inside you get these sprues. So you get three of these. Each sprue allows you to make two of the heavy weapons. If you are clever you might be able to magnetize these somewhat to swap in and out. Uh, or do some other clever jiggery pokery. So looking at the sprue itself, we have got sets of heads up here. Uh, we have bicorns. In fact, let's swing it around this way. It would make more sense. Yes. So we have the bicorns on either side. Um, and then what they've done with this box is the bicorns new, as are these Napoleonic style. Uh, not sure what they're called, because they're also bicorns, but facing the other way. But these uh, front-facing hats, they're new to the sprue and to the, the grognards for your command. Uh, but what they've also done is they've included a female head variant for each of the existing helmet slash head variants they have. So we have the French Foreign Legion, Cappy. Uh, we have the First World War uh, Adrian style helmet, we have the bearskin mitre, and we have the shako uh, with female heads. We have command sprue wise, a uh, form of comm unit, unit or a field telephone, which is this arm and pack pack. We have a walkie talkie pointing arm, big smashy fist. Uh, we have a pistol, a chain sword, rifle with bayonet. Down here we have a Imperial Eagle with a little Imperial flame in the middle of it, which is quite nice. We also have, towards the top here, a sniper rifle. And then some additional pieces, things like holstered pistol. Um, there should be a bottle of wine and a glass, because they are French. I know they're on here somewhere, I just can't see them. Oh, there we are. Bottle of wine and the wine glass uh, is the very top corner, because that's very important. Uh, you can even make a medic. Heavy weapon-wise, you get a heavy mortar, two carriages, one that takes these wheels which have got these industrial, very, very World War I style of uh, wheels for them. We have four barreled uh, quad anti-aircraft gun, possibly, that sits in this little bubble turret, which is beautiful. And this on the, uh, the back, the sort of the radar rangefinder, is all molded in layers. So if you're not a top class painter, you could get away with just painting that green and washing it. And then that will do all of the rings and blips on your radar in one go. Happy days. We also have uh, legs. So we have pair standing, seated for this gun. And then we also have crouching, either loading or firing the, uh, the sniper rifle. There should be another pair of crouching legs hiding on me again. And we have these five torsos, which are four regular and then one that has all of the awards which again could be your commander because it's very important to have all of the medals oh i know that uh, other pair of crouching legs should be there they must have fallen off into the box it's the same pair of legs but reversed so rather than kneeling on the uh, left leg they're kneeling on the right so i've put some together so let's zoom in and take a look so starting with our sort of command squads here you can see I have 
an eagle bear with a massive punchy fist in case anybody comes to take his uh, eagle away for the Space Emperor will not like that. All of War Games Atlantic's miniatures go together very nicely. There's a decent level of detail on them without being overly fussy, which is what I want when I'm painting loads and loads of the same stuff. I don't want to have to paint every individual stitch mark. As you can see, he has all of the medals, which is key. He's also got a gas mask on because the future is not a place to fight uh, if you're not prepared. So that is the first of our command. I've also made this with the field telephone, so it could be command or could be part of the heavy weapon section. So as you can see, explaining where exactly he wants the artillery to land. And I've put one of the uh, Forest Legion Kepis on him, which I think is actually probably my favourite. I know they look very Napoleonic and the Shaka would make more sense, but I just like that. Uh, it's, it's just a good look for a hat. Then I finally have my sniper. So again, another kneeling pose. Sniper rifle is simple enough because it just joins up with one arm and the fit is very good. So no gapping and not a pain to line up. So there we have our sniper. So taking a look then at the heavy weapons, essentially you have two carriages. Um, so this carriage, I've, I've built both of them essentially so we can see all the different gun variants. Uh, the guns are generic enough that you can use them for any game, Warpath, 40K, um, whatever you want really. This has a single barrel, could be a big laser gun of some description, so your last cannon type of things. Um, front leg goes on, it's notched and fits flush to the base of the, uh, the front leg, I suppose, where the hinge is, so it goes together very easily. And then this gun shield sits into two recessed parts on the carriage. Uh, the fit on the actual guns is not so tight that you could swap them over using just friction. You will have to glue them uh, or magnetize them. But that's, you know, par for the course, really. So that's the first. Second variant of that, or the second one that uses the same carriage, is this triple barrel. Again, could do with having the barrel drilled out. But this could be easily an auto cannon or a heavy bolter, depending on your point of view. And the same same build mechanic, so not particularly difficult. Both of them have a sort of a semicircle or a slight ellipse carved out of the back. That is for our gunner. So if I find my gunner. So I made one up with the Napoleonic Chaco. He sits in and then that just sits underneath. So depending on how you're going to mount these, I've set him up as if he's going to be mounted flush to the base on maybe a, a 60 mil. If you're going to mount him on a separate base to the, the gun, then obviously push the arms further down so it's not quite as in his face. Um, but yeah, so that's just how the gunners line up and they do the trick I have my mortar I've also got a, a loader for the mortar here who comes with a case of additional weaponry so more mortars getting ready to load has a rack of them on the back firing through again these legs notch in so there is only one way to assemble them so you don't have to worry about not having the legs aligned um, and then the wheels go on the wheel glue joints are fairly shallow so you can bend them slightly when you're putting them on so be careful when you're lining them up to glue 
I did just run a drill bit into the middle of that mortar just to give me a because that's again solid but I just like the the look of it but yeah overall a really nice piece to obliterate your enemies with the final one then and my favorite is my quad gun now it is very front heavy but that's only front heavy because it's not completely assembled you have this battery pack or ammo pack that you build up and fits into these two notches so if I can do that there you go you can see that fits and that is a perfect counterbalance for it but I didn't want to glue that on because like I say I want you to see that I mean those concentric range finding rings just look great and we have the big ball socket these would make great door guns as well if people are building up uh, any sort of VTOL craft I'm presuming whenever I glued these in they uh, they're the same length but you have this sort of double V double um, diagonal and then a single diagonal on the top one so I just lined them up single to the top double to the bottom I think that's right because you do have a slight difference in length although also the holes are different depths so but that goes in your uh, seat goes on and your gunner slips in there and there we have it once he's on and firing people beware I think we're going to see a terrific amount of these kicking around on tabletops and on conversions because it's such an unusual style of, uh, of heavy weapon uh, especially for a, a sci-fi infantryman I think we've, we've become used to just seeing tripods and bipods but this this big ball gun shield is just fantastic and if you're very clever with your painting you could make those cuts look like um, sort of glass like he is a door gunner or a ball gunner on a on a ship or a plane so there we have it the Le Grognard's heavy weapons so there we have it the heavy weapons and the command all in one handy dandy box uh, I do think these are excellent looking figures uh, I can't get enough of that ball socket quad gun and, you know whatever way you want to run that auto cannon or door mounted thing on a Valkyrie who knows but I imagine an awful lot of people will be picking these up the uh, Grognard's base infantry set shall we say yeah that's the best way to put it um, has been doing sterling work especially if you look for kit bashing uh, because so many people have been finding World War I gas mast helmets and putting them on these to make Death Corps of Krieg because they've uh, got that beautiful three-quarter length coat on them let me know what you think below uh, what will you be using them for until next time bye bye go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on